I'm always looking for historical stones. I know my core business is always looking for new deposits and new discoveries, and that's what I'm globally renowned for, getting in there first, even when there's no roads, no access. I go, I find the mine, I track it down, and I get in, get the best quality at the best price and get out. But I also hunt down historical stones, like the Balas Ruby, dating back to the period of Marco Polo, 800 to 1,000 years ago. The Tokovoyo emeralds coming out of Russia over a hundred years ago. I also hunt down anything of historical relevance, you know, emeralds that date back to Colombia back in the time of, you know, the crusaders, etc. I also, I try, and this is one of the most difficult historical gems in the world to get into and find is the historical Kalkonda diamond. The historical Kalkonda diamond dates back two to 300 years ago in what's known today as Hyderabad. It's actually quite awkward because Hyderabad used to be the diamond market and where the diamond mines of India were placed. It's actually ironically now a pearl market. If you go to Hyderabad, they trade pearls there. I guess the, you know, the trading model has carried on generations as the diamond mines dried up. But the Kalakonda diamond mines is where basically like the Kuhinur diamond is from, the Hope diamond is from, the Dresden diamond is from, the Orlov diamond is from. A lot of key, very important diamonds in the world come from this deposit dating back 300, to 300 years ago. This was before the discovery of diamonds in Africa. So it was the predominant place and locale back in the day. We are able to identify this stone through the optical transparency of these diamonds. They are known as type 2A. There's a lack of nitrogen within the crystal structure, and that's what makes them unique and special. What you've got here is a stone that was cut down from, actually, she got a decent yield out of this. It was 2.3 carat. It was a rose cut, and she cut it to a 1.01 carat D flawless. You see, these stones are predominantly cut in the historical rose cut. So, Kat, when we bring them to cat we bring them in the historical cut what cat and her engineers do is they look at it to try to bring it up to the level cat cells which is the perfect cut d flawless it has to be the perfect white has to be the perfect cut has to be the perfect clarity so a d flawless colconda is not something that is very common but that's what cat is always trying to find and that's why we don't have a lot because they're almost impossible to find you were looking at a 1.01 carat perfect octagon perfect cut d flawless Kolkonda diamond comes with all the provenance all the paperwork you've also got 1.8 carats of baguettes running down that shank now those baguettes are one in a hundred d flawless so very difficult to make 1.8 carats running down the band if you like and those are big sized baguette the big size baguettes you got the one carat solitaire in the middle the baguettes are significant size as well so a lot of sparkle coming out of this ring but something that can be worn every day and then passed down as an air loom because these stones are only getting rarer and rarer as time goes on there is no mining and hasn't been for 200 years so extremely collectible Kolkonda diamond i love it when cat makes something work when she can keep the weight because at first you know we always debate when we buy these stones when you have to go through the process of removing any impurities to get it to the perfect d flawless to be able to sustain above a carrot because a lot of times it'll fall to 80 point 70 point but cat's engineer have managed to maintain the perfect cut, the perfect clarity, the perfect color, and it's just the perfect diamond. And it's got all the paperwork, the provenance, and the historics of it.